All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today um, as we have a conversation with the gamers. So a uh, really quick introduction for myself. I'm Jared Counterman, the Associate Director of Student Resources here at CSU Global. Um, among of the various things that I oversee, one of them is the Career Center, the Career Center and our eSports program, um, which is actually managed by our eSports coach, Brian Hummel, who I will turn it over to introduce our guest speaker today. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm super excited to have Rebecca here from the Gamers. We actually met a while back uh, at a LAN, one of the first LAN events, um, and it was a pleasure meeting her and her crew. Um, they've been doing some fantastic stuff in the esports world, bringing communities together that you know haven't always had the spotlight. And uh, I think it's very, you know, an awesome thing of what they're doing. And I'd like to introduce you to Rebecca, one of the founders of uh, the Gamers, and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Brian. I'm so happy to be here and share a little bit about our story with all of you. So thank you for coming. My name, like Brian said, is Rebecca Dixon, and I am one of the four co-founders of The GameHers. The GameHers is a social network, media platform, and lifestyle brand for women who game and women who work in the gaming industry. So we, my co four co-founders and I are actually not endemic to gaming. We had a company prior to this that um, was also centered around community building in a completely different industry in the parenting world. We've created a platform for parents um, to come together, educate, support. We had a networking, or I'm sorry, a matchmaking platform for parents and caregivers. And we, we sold that business and we're trying to figure out um, what to do next. And we had some really interesting um, adjacencies to the gaming and esports world, which kind of led us to where we are, we are now. Um, so from my perspective, my uh, dad and brother were co-owners of one of the pro esports teams. So I started following the industry and, and learning a lot about it and, and realizing where um, kind of women sit in the industry. At the same time, one of my co-founders, totally coincidentally, she went from the parenting world to the toy world and was doing some toy design and licensing with Al Khan, the visionary behind Pokemon. And she found herself at a number of gaming um, and video game conferences as well. And, and the often quoted statistic that women are 46% of gamers worldwide kept being repeated over and over. And the two of us just said, and this was back in 2017, said, that's, that's a great statistic. Where are they? So that is, that's kind of what led us to, to where we are. I think what I'm gonna do is share my screen just so I can show you some of what we've been doing. And then I'll, I'll talk for a little, tell you about our story, and, and then I'll open it up for any questions. So, so yeah, like I said, The Gamers is one of the first and largest media platforms, social networks, and lifestyle brands for women who game. And here's that statistic. There are 2.7, and I actually think I just saw that it's, it's higher now, this, it's growing daily, uh, but 2.7 billion gamers globally, and it's a very often quoted and kind of data-backed statistic that 46% of them are women. The sad part is that 75% of these women have gamed with their voice commands off um, simply to hide the fact that they are even women. They experience a lot of hate and toxicity. And like I mentioned earlier, they're not represented. They're not in the media. They're not, you know, it, it is better now than it was even a few years ago, but they're not, certainly not 46% of protagonists. They're not that's not the percentage of developers and therefore that, that harassment and toxicity exists. So uh, they long for a safe and, and easy way to connect and socialize and game with other women gamers. So what we created is the first and only women-centered hub for gamers, including industry experts and content creators and publishers, pro teams, brands, and anybody who touches the industry. The biggest theme that we heard as we were interviewing thousands of women before we launched our company was the desire for a safe and easy way for them to connect with each other. It's hard for women to find other women to connect with. And when they do, they, um, or if they do, you know, often, like I said, often they're, they're gaming without their voice commands on in the first place. 
So the, our app will solve that problem. It is um, built, you know, it's built by women, for women, with women in mind, and it's marketed and targeted specifically for them. We are super excited about the, to announce that it is in beta and um, we, it'll be live in a couple, well, as soon as it can be, <laughs> as soon as we work through the beta. I used to give an exact timeline, but this is the first time I've ever been a part of a business that's developing an app. And as probably some of you know, that timeline keeps getting, getting pushed off, but it should be very soon. We're looking at October or November. So definitely take a look for, look, take a look, um, for it. This is our, I'm showing you a deck that we often show investors, and I figured it would be relevant to show this slide. We, we launched our company as a for-profit, or as we like to call it, for-purpose company. And I bring that up you know, to you because we often get asked, are you a nonprofit? And there are a lot of great nonprofits in this space. In fact, before we launched, we, we noticed you know, when we were doing that research to say, where are the women? Is anybody, does anybody care that they're 46%? Where are they? We did a lot of research to find out who was trying to sort of fix that, right that wrong and fix that problem. We found a lot of women in the industry doing things like mentoring and, and um, speaking on women in gaming panels and things like that. Um, and we also found a lot of incredible nonprofits and we work with many, many, many of them. That being said, <clears throat> that you saw that slide that had the hub on it, <clears throat> we decided based on experience from our last company that the only way to move this so-called needle for women in gaming is to create, create a media platform, a lifestyle brand and launch an, an app in a for-profit model because we need to get every vertical of the whole industry involved. Then that means schools, brands, publishers, pro teams, um, which means we have a model where we take in revenue and then we use that revenue to go out and expand more. Um, so this is, you know, we have advertising, we merchandise and licensing. We, I mean, you can see my sweatshirt. We're not selling this stuff. Well, we, we actually are selling it online, but we're not really, it's not one of our biggest revenue streams right now, but we certainly expect it to be sponsored events. We've been, we, we have a couple of events in the works. Obviously COVID has put a little bit of a damper on that, but that, that is, for sure, something in the future. And our app, I mean, our app will be free for sure, but it will have the opportunity for microtransactions. And so that'll be another thing that we'll do. And, it, you know, gamers are used to that sort of spending behavior because they do that in games. So um, we have a, right now we exist on social. So we launched on social. This is our, our um, you know, our reach as of, as of a couple of weeks ago. And it's growing a lot right now because we're in the middle of one of our biggest events of the year, the Game Her Awards, which I'll tell you in a minute. But the purpose of this is just to show you we're, we exist everywhere now. We want it to be a media brand because we want to exist everywhere because we kind of want it to be that it's not a conversation. Are there women gamers? It's just they're they are everywhere. And we're a place we can, you know, we consider ourselves a hub. We like to amplify any initiatives that we see that are positive towards women in gaming. We like to collaborate and co-brand whenever we can. And then we also like to fill in the white space. And so that's what we do here. Our Discord is really robust. It's now 4,000 is the past week. This slide says 3,000. So, um, so this, is, this is kind of where we are and our app will be added to that once it gets out of beta. This is again, that piece of it that I was talking before, the only way for us to kind of make a difference is to work with everybody that we possibly can. So, you know, we try to put, we, pro, we try to not, it's not for putting ourselves, but it's trying to find initiatives that are happening in the industry, put them in the media, work with the brands that are doing it really well, that care about women, and also maybe try to help some of the brands that aren't doing it so well and say, why don't you, you know, think about, um, think about women. You've been in gaming for a long time. Half of gamers are women. The publishers and the leagues, well, the, the publishers and the leagues are some of the ones that have, especially the publishers are, if you've been following gaming news at all recently, um, you are aware that they are some of the biggest ones with the sort of media problems. Um, and I think that the thing that's important there to note is, you know, Activision Blizzard, they're being sued by the state of California. They've been in the press a ton. They're being inve investigated by the SEC. I mean, they obviously historically have have some some serious allegations against them and that's very concerning and what I think we want to do is is not so much talk about 
the concern because that will be fixed. I and mean, there are there are there are avenues that you know that that problem is sort of going through to be fixed. What we'd like to do is say that they're probably not going anywhere. So let's figure out how we can be a part of a a positive solution for them. Um, and and we'll see kind of when that happens, depending on what what they end up doing. The last piece of it, and this one this one's important, just to say who is a gamer. Again, you know, gamers are kind of almost everyone at this point. There's a gamer gaming itself is having a moment in time, as as you are all, uh, I'm sure, very aware. It's connecting with music and sports and entertainment and fashion. And NASA uses gaming and and um, air traffic controllers and the military. And so gamers are are everywhere. They're everybody, and we in our community, you know, we are specifically the game hers community of, of gamers, for, of women, but also femme identifying, non-binary, marginalized genders, and, and all allies. We, out, we allow and encourage and need men in our community because without the support of men, this, this nothing is going to change. So that's, that, that deck is a little bit of a background on our overall company as a whole. I think the, the things that are very relevant that I'd love to tell you about, um, I mentioned our app. That's kind of our big place where we're going to be. And um, we would, of course, love for all of you to find us there. The, the big event that we host every year is going on right now. If you go to our website, you'll see all about it. In fact, today is the last day to vote for it. It's the Game Hers Awards. So I, I mentioned that we had a company before this. We learned a lot about community building, how to how to create, grow, build um, engaged communities. And we tried last year, we, we said, you know, there are a lot of award shows. Some people say, who needs another award show? But the thing about it is when you, when you put an awards show out that is just for women, it gives the opportunity to highlight women who've been working in the industry for years um, or who are just up and coming and honor them. And again, create that sort of normalcy and 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 highlighting um the fact that there are women in these jobs there are women doing this doing this so last year we kind of just threw up the awards on our website to see what would happen and they went viral we ended up on the front page of twitch we had 600 nominations 72,000 votes and the awards that were exactly a year ago is what put us on the map in the gaming industry it's what made people know about us because people's friends and and colleagues were getting um honored What's really exciting is this year, we thought last year was viral. This year, they went absolutely crazy. We had 4,000 or 5,000 nominations in a month. And we, as of like this morning, we already had 100,000 votes. And so the voting ends today, then there's an advisory period, and then there's finalist voting. So it's just, it's really heartwarming to know that a, a method for, you know, it's not so much solving this problem as bringing light to the fact that all of these people were here and like, we want to honor them. So um, certainly check out the awards. The finale will air on Twitch on November 18th, and it's going to be a really special event. The other, uh, the, the last thing I will talk about is very early on in our company existence, we realized if we are going to, again, try to move that so-called needle for women in gaming, we better pay attention to college because, you know, here we are, college is, that's where um, there are so many women who game. That's where there are so many um, potential developments and places where we could go in and help facilitate positive movement for women in gaming. So our collegiate programming is officially going to launch in two weeks. And what that means is we're not a league, we're not hosting a tournament, but we, were, we will basically be wherever we can in terms of branding in college um, and in terms of support to help college students um, find their way. So on our website, we have a very, very extensive resource library, everything from tips on gaming to tips on starting an esports program to mental health resources, career resources, all of the things that gaming can provide in a positive way that are sometimes confusing to figure out how to find. We have the opportunity to start a collegiate chapter on any campus and any campus, any virtual campus, a collegiate chapter. What that really means is anything from one gamer um, to an existing club branding 
with the gamers and having access to all of that resource, it's, I mean, all of this is free, by the way, it's just, it's just res us, our, our resources. We will have facilitation of mentorships, access to job postings, um, and hopefully when the world opens up a little bit more than it is right now, the ability to get involved in live events. And so we're, we're really excited about that. We have a chapter that it, our pilot program is at DePaul University, and they had a, a number of women who were coming together to game casually. It's kind of around the esports team. They have a facility and they have the varsity and a JV team, but it was still for whatever reason, because women gamers are sometimes kind of off on the side or it's like gaming, you know, women's gaming night Tuesday. And then it's, it's just, it's for whatever reason, you know, the word that sometimes uses is awkward. And we're just trying to say, well, it's not, uh, it's not awkward women game, like the, you know, just kind of normalize the whole thing. So the DePaul program has been really successful so far. And we're trying to repeat that wherever we can, but also to be very honest, a lot of schools don't, you know, don't have any women who game and would like to have women. A lot of schools have women, but they don't have a team. And so what we're saying is whether it's a casual game or whether it's one game or whether it's a lot, we can be a resource um, for kind of helping formalize all of that. We have a code of conduct. that's a very good entry point. Just sign the code of conduct. It, it has a lot of rules, but basically the bottom line is be nice. And if, if, a, if a gamer signs that and if a school signs that, you're a chapter, that's it. Um, so the college program has a lot more pieces to it. It's got a Discord channel. It's got, you know, we've got the backing of Twitch student. Lenovo is, is backing us. A lot of the pro teams, Evil Geniuses, Ver, um, Rocker and Version 1, Team Envy. And we are um, just really excited to kind of see what see, see where that can go and be as much of a resource as we can. So I think I'll pause here and, and I will happily answer any questions. Um, I can look at the chat. Are there questions in here? I see a bunch of things. Um, no, can, um, yeah, no questions. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I can talk, you know, more or, um, if you, I'm trying to think of what else I could tell you. We have, we have interns, by the way, if, um, we have a, we don't have one internship program. We have a sort of a database of interns that when we need, when we have projects, they can work for us, but then sometimes those get more long-term and, and, you know, ideally will turn into jobs. We're growing really, really quickly. I mean, an example I could give you is when our awards blew up this year, it was such a, a wonderful challenge to have, but we had an operations challenge very, very, very quickly where we needed to process the awards on the back end and respond to people. And, you know, some people's gamer tag went up on our website a little bit differently because the person who nominated them didn't do it right all of this kind of stuff um so we we had a, we got a lot of interns quickly in that week um so if any my i will also go ahead and share my email is rebecca at the gamers i am very active on um linkedin from an industry perspective and our the gamers we're just the gamers at, at all socials we're very active on on all socials but particularly discord and, and twitter and so um, we're very open to anybody connecting us, you know, we'll get back to you. And we, we just, we love being in the space. We've gotten a really, really positive response and I'm, I'm super psyched to be here today. Um, oh, I just see the question. What's, is there a portal for the intern program? There's not yet, but there will be. Um, so our collegiate programming, we keep saying, um, it's going to launch what the launch is just going to be it it'll be all over our social so you can't miss it it's going to just be a drop down on our website and on that drop down it'll have all the different pieces to it so one thing it'll have by the way that i can also mention is events and it'll be events that we're hosting but it'll also be a way to post events we because one thing we want to continue to do is be, act as a media hub and and amplify anything that's going on so let's say um there was there are certain colleges hosting just an individual event at a college that's the kind of thing we like to have and, and, and promote and post um, just to, to show it's happening. So the events will be something you can self-post, signing up for the code of conduct. And yes, the in, their intern piece of it will have a, a portal because, you know, again, at the end of the day, we're in, we're in esports and gaming, we're coming around women, but we're a startup. And we're, so we, the needs that we have from a um, 
you know, from an operations perspective, include everything from, you know, writers to graphic designers to people on the back end of our site to, um, to just college students telling us, you know, are we doing the right thing with our app? Because as you can obviously tell, I'm not a college student, um, but I, I am a, an experienced community builder and I'm excited to be kind of organizing all of this and very excited. Brian mentioned that we met um, at an event, and that's one of the only events that I've, I've been to a handful of events, but, you know, so we, I don't think I mentioned, we launched in March of 2020. So we picked um, the same week as COVID to launch, and uh, it turned out actually to be a great time to launch a company in the gaming space. Um, and then, you know, because of our, our mission, 2020 was such a, a nutty year all around, um, but the social justice movement, I think, really kind of also gave us a little bit more of a uh, amplification. So it turned out to be a good time to launch this company. That being said, it was completely virtual. The first in-person thing I ever went to is when I met you, Brian. <laughs> so, yeah, my first and second, right? And then in St. Louis, I think yeah. we, we met yeah, again as well. Yeah, first and second. You're right. Yes. Um, you know, I actually have a question for you. What What are the type of you know, jobs that your company currently has, like what are the positions that are filled like to actually operate this company? Yeah. You know, what does that look like? Sure. So the, um, we've got four co-founders and as co-founders, each of us sort of focus on different things. So I'm the CEO. So my main roles are um, monetizing the company. So I do all of the, the majority of the external relationships with brands, also fundraising to operate the company. Um, my colleague Heather is our COO and she does a lot of sort of overall vision for the company and then also internal operations both of kind of structure and then also people. Um, my co-founder Laura is chief product officer and she's our app person. She is all, she is not actually so we didn't we didn't know when we first when we very first launched the company that we would have an app we found that out super quickly that that was a, a huge need. And so Laura works closely with our um, product manager who has launched apps, um, women-based community apps like Healthline and Discovery. Um, and she, she's, she's everything app. She meets with our development team constantly. Um, and then our fourth co-founder, Verda, is our chief community and chief content officer. So she, Verda is the only one of us who is really actively um first of all she's a gamer she does she has a show on twitch every week she's a newish gamer her, her show is called level up and she learns a new game every week at, and her so her guest teaches her a new game so it's pretty fun for for people for gamers who kind of want to go back to like you know the days when they were learning a new game it's gotten a really fun response Verda's is also very active in our discord she also has and i don't think i mentioned this in too much detail, but I, I should have, you know, when you're when you're talking about women in gaming, the issues surrounding women are very similar and similar and you know amplified when you also include diversity. So Ver, Verda has a long career in diversity, equity, and inclusion work. She's worked with nonprofits and um, schools, and so she also brings that experience to the table um, because it's something that comes up just right in line with women. Um, so she's a very active in our discord and, and also kind of um, our social media. So those are the four co-founders who kind of oversee each of those divisions. And then internally, we, we, we have a very big team and a lot of our team, some of our team is more full-time than others. We have a social media director and communications director who kind of manages the the brand on social and, and, and out, out, outward facing. And we have somebody who is completely focused on our awards in terms of the digital side of the, the awards. So next year we will have a um, backend website that can manage awards. We didn't, we didn't know they, that we would need that yet because you know, you don't need it if you're just manually tallying awards in an Excel spreadsheet, but we've gotten beyond that. 100,000 votes. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a little nutty this year, but again, it's a great challenge to have had, and our team has been literally working around the clock, like quite literally. Um, but so we, we, have a, we have one person who leads that, and then a lot of people who help. Um, so that's another piece of it. 
our the awards finale is going to be a big production. So we have a producer, um, an internal producer who is, you know, does the run of show and figures out because we have some brand sponsors. So we have, you know, 30 second spots that have to be gotten from the brand, the, ad the advertisements. We do little vignettes to, fe to feature women in gaming. And then we have all the award um, winners accepting their speeches. And so our producer internally leads that kind of from our end. And then we have an external producer who actually puts the show together, um, who we have hired. Um, and then we've got a community manager for our Discord and we have a product manager I mentioned for our app. We also have, you know, all the things you need for a st general startup, like a lawyer and a controller. And um, then we also have a brand, chief brand strategist who helps you know manage and drive all of our relationships with brands in the space and you know that's a really interesting piece of it for us because while i'm you know speaking to college students you know it, it it's all of the research is showing that you know the college students today and that age group are very um caring and and interested in what is behind the brands that they're using and buying and so that, that thought process, it becomes so important in gaming because if a brand is entering the gaming space because they just, they realize like, oh, the gaming industry is huge. If we don't pay attention to gaming, you know, we're, leave, we're missing out on advertising to a lot of our customers. So a lot of brands will just jump into the gaming space and they won't necessarily always do enough research and realize that women are half of gamers and they get, you know, in trouble on social media and all of that. So there's a lot behind figuring out what brands make sense to work with. And, you know, I, I alluded to that in my, um, in that presentation, but it's, it's a really kind of fun part of it because the other piece of it is that with this, you know, there's, there's the esports specific side of gaming and then also the streaming side and streamers are, have, you know, big relationships often with brands as well, because they're, they're right on, on screen. So there, there are a lot of pieces to that. So our, our, our chief brand strategist is another, another role we have, but quite, quite truthfully, we are, we're, we're so happy and, and honored to say that we're, we're growing really quickly. So I think that the types of roles that we'll continue to have will probably fall under those categories and also grow. I mean, I mentioned our, our merchandise is something that is something we haven't really focused on too much yet because we only have so much bandwidth. We certainly have it. Obviously I'm wearing it. But that's a piece of it that will continue to grow. So that that's a whole nother skill set um, and sort of department that will evolve in the next year. And then the, once our app launches, I mean, there we've got customer service and because the the app, the the whole reason it's safe and it's a safe and easy way for women who game to connect, it's based basically a matchmaking app, more or less. And then once you've matched, um, you can, you know, there are events and socializing and there's play now, but the, the reason it's safe, you, I mean, you can't ensure that an app is safe, even Facebook and, and Instagram, there's, you can do, you can spend all the tech money on technology in the world that you want. And we are certainly making it as safe from a tech perspective as we can, but really the, the way to make it safe is to have a no, um, you know, to have rules and, and you just can't break them. And if you do, you're kicked out. That's just it. So our app has a lot of things where let's say somebody has a negative experience with someone, you can even say, I just don't want to ever see that person in the app again. And so if that, if it goes through all the processes of analysis and they end up staying in the app for whatever reason, you still won't ever have to see them and go, won't ever have to go in any room with them and you'd be notified. So it's got a lot of, a lot of neat things like that, but to do that, that also takes somebody who's managing that. So we're growing quickly and, and it's one reason we're also excited to be talking to college students because then the the needs that we have at our company are 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 continuing to grow and it's 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 great for us to be able to have those kind of connections with college students so that when we need somebody to do something we could say oh we've got this whole group of of students let's reach out to them now yeah no that's awesome and and one thing that i loved about your company is how willing you are to take 
you know, criticism and change things and, you know, feedback and all that. I mean, we had like, what, a 10 minute conversation and then bam, there's this whole new idea that, you know, yeah. you're, you're launching. And then, you know, it's, it's something like that where you can just pivot on the, on the fly and, and, you know, say, Hey, we're going to do this, which is something that you all are doing. And, and I think that's awesome. Um, you really Thank can't you. beat somebody like that when, when you're doing that. So, I mean, I think that's how, that's why we actually always lead with the fact that we're not endemic to the gaming industry because we're not. And we are very experienced in saying, in, in talking to communities and driving our business plans based on what the community is talking about. And um, we certainly haven't always gotten it right. I mean, not only do we like, we like to respond to ideas. I mean, you and I are working on an idea to get more college students working for us. And I'm so excited about that. But we've also, you know, we've also done things. We've made, we've made mistakes too. I mean, we, we, made, we did something about a year ago that we thought was inclusive. And we found out from a group of people that it wasn't inclusive. And so we apologized on Twitter and we changed it. Um, what else can you do, you know? Um, and and I think we're we're also at a, at a point in time where there's a lot of emphasis around making everything inclusive to everybody, which is clearly what we're all about. Um, but everybody doesn't always agree on what that is, and so we're we're always doing our best, talking to the most people we can. I mean, um, we actually were very lucky to be able to attend two PAXs before the world shut down. So I did actually go to two live events, but our, our company hadn't launched yet, but that got us exposure to about 10,000 women in gaming. And we talked to a lot of them there, but we also got a lot of their contact information and kept in touch with a lot of them. So we've run focus groups, surveys, conversations in discord. I mean, on and on and on, because at the end of the day, if we're not doing what you just said, if we're not listening to what the people that we're trying to help want, then, you know, why are we even here? So thank no, you. For exactly. And, that. and you can, uh, you can never please everyone. So, no. you know, that's just how this world works, right? Yes. Um, we try our best for sure. But, um, that was awesome. If anyone has any more questions before we, uh, make Rebecca speak for an hour straight, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's got another meeting and stuff after this, please feel free to, but you know, other than that, is there any specific channels that you can plug in for yourself or for the gamers that you might want people to follow? Like what would be the I best just, way for these people to come follow the community? Maybe discord. Yeah, you or... know, It's really easy. So we are the game hers everywhere. Um, definitely our discord is where I will share my email again. The, the, um, our discord is where you can kind of get a, a real feel for what our community is like. There's just so much activity in our discord. So join our discord. But, you know, our, our Instagram, actually, a lot of the research we did for our app happened in the comments of our Instagram, um, which was kind of fun. And it just happened authentically. So um, Instagram is a great one, tw obviously Twitter. And definitely reach out to me personally. I'm at Rebecca. So it's R-E-B-E-C-C-A at the game hers. So gamers with an H dot com. Yep, that's there it is in the chat. And then I'm Rebecca Dixon, D-I-X-O-N on LinkedIn. And I think my maiden name might be in there too, Rebecca Brock Dixon. So B-R-O-C-K. But I'm I'm easy to find. I'm super, super active on LinkedIn personally and, and keep um just because I find that a lot of our, our industry is. And then the game hers as a company is really active on Twitter. So those are the best places. And I'm just, I'm really excited to be here. And I, I definitely mean that about following up. I, I respond. And I, I think that, you know, I could maybe close out by saying this is kind of, this talk is one of the most important things that I do because we need, you know, we need college students to know what we're doing and we need feedback and we need interns. We need people to work for us. And we want, we want to hear support criticism. We want people to download the app and, and the more all of that happens, the more we can be successful at, at driving our mission. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. And, and, you know, that's kind of my whole mission. Esports is supposed to bring everybody together in gaming. Definitely. So, you know, if, if almost 50% of the gamers are women and they're not included, then, you know, what's the point? So exactly. I, I love your mission and, you know, I'm, I'm sure the students love this and you'll probably get a lot of, uh, you know, people are shy to ask questions in these. You'll yeah, probably get a lot fine. of emails after. That's but, why I um, give it. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Rebecca. This was a Thank pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you both, Brian and Rebecca, well. for joining us today. Have a good one, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.